Hey all, Mike here with Cine Samples, and we are proud to present to you CineWinds Pro. Now CineWinds Pro is our expansion to the CineWinds Core Library. So if you remember a quick recap of the Core Library, that was sort of the essential foundation of the woodwind section, um, <clears throat> which was piccolo, flute, oboe, clarinet, and bassoon. Now with the Pro Library, We've expanded it to include alto flute, bass flute, English horn, E flat clarinet, bass clarinet, contra bassoon, and that's for the first section of the library. That's sort of what we call the doublers section. And then there's a whole other section to Cinewinds Pro called the ethnic section, which we got a whole bunch of um, bagpipes, penny whistle, Irish flute. I'll go through that whole list in the second video. But right now, I think in this video, I'm going to focus on the, the doublers portion of Cinewinds Pro. So let's start with the alto flute articulations. So this is, uh, everything is set up the same way that we did with the, the core library. So you've got the shorts in eighth notes, quarter notes, and halves. Right? And then if you hold down the pedal uh, in the default setting, you have the true legato mode. That's actually something I wanted to clarify. Um, in all of Cinebrass and Cinewind's core, uh, if you hold the pedal down, you're in true legato mode in the articulations patch. So you don't necessarily have to load up the, the true legato patches. Um, so everything is uh, mod wheel controls the the dynamics. And by default, breath control, which is CC number two, that controls the amount of vibrato. So here's with the vibrato off. And then well, I'll add a little bit. So I'll take the pedal off. Okay, and another real quick thing I want to talk about is with our true legato, by default it's it's um, polyphonic legato. So what that means is, say you're playing a chord, right? You can change any of the notes in that chord. And then each note, it has its own independent legato transitions. So the script kind of figures out what you're doing and, uh, and plays the appropriate transitions. It's actually pretty smart and Right. So let's move on. So that's the alto flute. Here's the uh, bass flute. English horn. We really, we spent 
a lot of time trying to get this legato to sound as good as it can. So I think we really figured it out. We're going to take what we learned from this and apply it to Cinewin's core. English horn. Uh, and then we got E-flat clarinet. So the E-flat clarinet is just a much higher, uh, or it's a smaller clarinet, but so it gets higher notes. So this one has no vibrato by default, because it's traditionally how clarinet is played uh, in a film setting. That's with vibrato on. Here's the bass clarinet. This one's really cool. Okay, let's see. Is a uh, the dynamics all the way down. Oh, bass clarinet. And contrabassoon, this is actually really cool. Um, this is the lowest instrument in the orchestra. It's actually really cool at a very low dynamic level here. His Same thing, breath control controls the amount of vibrato. everything is um, using this mapping window so by default we have the velocity map for switching between the different articulations right and you have all these other choices and you can create your own as well um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the settings page because this is something that we added to uh, Cinewin's core and I didn't really go into much detail uh, in the in the other video so Let's do it. So it's split up into these three sections. We've got the legato uh, speed control right here. And then we have the effects section. And then down here is the round robin control, which I'll talk about in a second. So legato speed, what that is, what you can do is you can set this knob to a MIDI controller. This is really for people that want to get all tweaky and stuff. But if you're playing a fast line, what you want to do is increase the speed of the legato. And that will help with realism. And if you're doing more of a lyrical line, what that will do is it will it will stretch out the length of the legato. I shouldn't say stretch out. It actually moves the start point of the transition so that it's a little bit more lyrical and you hear more of that leap to the next note in the room. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just show you. 
So I'll put the speed all the way up, okay? Okay, and then I'll turn the speed all the way down. It's very subtle, but you can hear you hear more of the clicks of the uh, of the keys. You just hear more of that that transition sound. And, and by the way, here this is what it sounds like um, without any legato transition. So. Right, and turning it on. Um, I won't go through all these different effects, but we've got a high pass filter, low pass, and cool delay effects. Um, it's all the built in contact stuff, but just put it there to give you easy access to those effects. Now, round robin. Um, this applies to the shorts. So, how this works is, by default, it's set to a random round robin. So what that means is, you know... Let me do a little bit louder here. It's gonna choose from all the round robin that we have, um, it's just gonna choose a random one without repeating the one before. So no matter what, it's always gonna be different, and you're not gonna have that cycling effect, where you kinda hear the rhythm of the round robin. But we can put it on cycle if you want, and then you can you can hear. If you can hear that, but it kind of it cycles. Some people actually like that because they want a predictability in 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 their music, so that when you're recording it, it's going to play exactly the same samples every single time. So what we've done is we've added this. You put it in cycle mode, and then turn turn on this round robin reset. Okay. And what this does is, after a period of time, depending on how, how high you have this knob set, um, ranging from 5 seconds to uh, 10 seconds, it will reset back to 1 automatically. So let's say you have your piece, you know, it's played through all the way and you're ready to record it. Just wait 5 seconds and it will reset back to 1 and then you record from the start again. And then you're, you can be assured that the exact samples are going to be triggered every single time that you play the piece. So we actually are going to apply this to Cinebrass as well. And, and this feature is also already in Cinewind's core. Um, cool. And then here's a sample start. You can mess around with the, the, the attack of the start. And then we have this release delay, which mostly applies to the sustains. So... <laughs> If I turn it all the way up, it's going to... And if you really want to get tweaky with this, you can alter this to... to get your legato sounding as good as it can. And then um, we also have uh, the release trigger that you can turn on and off if you want. That's with no release trigger. It's still going through the reverb, but just with it on. Because I know some of you guys want to control over whether or not you can turn that on or off. Okay, I've went into way too much detail here. So that's the doublers. Um, and check out the next video where I'll go through all of the ethnic wind instruments. So thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.